Hello, I am Carlos Tourné and I am the director of the Centenary of Penn International. In this video, we will see some highlights of the life of Penn's Committee for Translational Linguistic Rights. Let's start here at the University of Barcelona on the 6th June 1996. We are attending the opening ceremony of the World Conference on Linguistic Rights organized by Penn's Committee plus CMN and UNESCO. Here we proclaimed the Universal Declaration of Linguistic Rights. We were more than 40 Penn centers together with the World Council of Indigenous Peoples, the Institut Curde de Paris, the Association des Juristes Berbères de France, the Instituto de Lengua y Cultura Aymara, Mercator Media, the Maori Language Commission, and more than 50 other international NGOs. For the next decade, the document shaped Penn's relationship with UNESCO and its Lingua Fax program. The declaration defined linguistic rights as human rights and was based on the concept of language community. By establishing the equality of rights of all language communities, Penn was dismissing any attempt to put a language upon another and oppress cultural communities for the language they speak. Radical equality among languages. All languages share the same rights. This vision to encompass all languages was an idea already expounded by Penn's founders. Let's go back to the origins of Penn, back to Oslo. In the first years of our organization, there were a lot of debates about how to organize Penn. The 1928 Oslo and the 1929 Vienna Congresses decided that the method of dividing the international Penn in sections and the right of voting at Congresses should be based upon literary and cultural ground. You can read it here in the resolution presented by the Delegate of American Penn. It was carried unanimously. So when delegates met at the Warsaw Congress in 1930 and they went for a day of rafting in the Dunajek River, Penn was already organized according to literatures. Also in 1928, Yiddish Penn was founded with three branches in Vilnius, Warsaw and New York. We can see here the Penn card of Nobel Isaac Bachevi Singer, whose first novel was published by Yiddish Penn. In 1996, His Holiness the Dalai Lama gave immediate support to the Universal Declaration of Linguistic Rights. The Tibetan delegates in Barcelona were among the group who initiated the process towards creating the Tibetan Writers Abroad Pen in 2000. Pen Tibet became very active in the committee and sent three delegates to the Girona meeting that in 2010 wrote the Girona Manifesto on Linguistic Rights. In 2017, the Tibetan Center for Human Rights and Democracy, directed by Pen member Tsering Somo, published a report about the systematic replacement of Tibetan language with Mandarin Chinese in Tibetan schools. The whole report used the concepts of the Universal Declaration of Linguistic Rights. The persecution of languages has also been crucial in Penn campaigns in defense of rights in prison. Penn has campaigned tirelessly for the Uyghur scholar Ilan Toti, and one of today's sessions will be chaired by the empty chair of Rahile Dawood. Let's go to Donostia, also known as St. Sebastian, 17 years ago. In 2004, the closing of the Basque newspaper Egunkaria by Spanish authorities was a shock in Penn. Joan Smith, member of the Writers in Prison Committee of English Penn, supported Marcello Temendi, who also received the active support of the President of Penn America, Salman Rushdie. Penn's campaign in defense of Egunkaria newspaper promoted the creation of Basque Penn, welcome at the 2004 Penn Congress in Tromso, Norway. In 2016, the city of Donostia welcomed a gathering of more than 200 civil society organizations from the whole of Europe who decided to give continuity to the Universal Declaration of Linguistic Rights in its 20th anniversary. They proclaimed the Donostia Protocol to ensure language rights, creating a specific agenda for the progress of each linguistic community in obtaining full cultural and linguistic rights. Let's move to New York. In 2005, another of the members of the committee, Pen America, launched the World Voices Festival, founded by the translator Esther Allen, together with Salman Rushdie and Mike Roberts. At the World Voices Festival, every year, more than 100 events during a very packed week are devoted to translation into the English language. Esther Allen edited for our committee the report, To be translated or not to be. She wrote, Rather than acting as the true lingua franca to facilitate communication among different languages, English all too often simply ignores whatever is not English, mistaking the global reach and diversity of the world's dominant language for the world itself. The Penn Report was presented at the 73rd 
Penn International Congress in Dakar, and in those years, Penn America Translation Committee received an extraordinary donation from Michael Henry Heim, a professor of Slavic languages at UCLA, who established the Penn Heim Translation Grants to support translations into English. Since its foundation, the grants have promoted translations from 33 languages into English. From New York to Diyarbakir, in March of the same year, 2005, Penn's first international meeting on linguistic rights took place in the city of Diyarbakir, in collaboration with UNESCO and the city's municipality. The sessions had simultaneous Kurdish, Turkish, English translation. It was the first time in the city's history that a session was held where the Kurdish language was included in international dialogue. The Universal Declaration of Linguistic Rights and its relevance in Turkey were at the center of debate. Kata Kulafkova, chair of the Penn's Translation and Linguistic Rights Committee, and Joanne de Mackerman, Penn's International Secretary, affirmed publicly that Turkey is made up of different linguistic communities and the only path to peace for the country is by respecting cultural diversity and linguistic rights. These hopes were short-lived as we could see with the assault by the Turkish army to the offices of Kurdish Penn in 2016, after the massacres in Diyarbakir and other Kurdish cities, or the eviction of 11,000 Kurdish school teachers in recent years in Turkey, or the fate of Sara Mohammadi condemned to five years in prison just for teaching the Kurdish language and literature in Iran, and, wait, and waiting today for the result of her appeal, we are in dark times. From Diyarbakir to Quebec, at the 2015 Penn International Congress in Quebec City, Penn approved a Declaration for Literary Translation and Translators prepared by the Committee at the Initiative of Émile Martel and Louis Jolicoeur. We see here Louis in the moment he's presenting the, the Declaration to the delegates of Africa. The Quebec Declaration clearly states that the rights of translators must be protected, but the physical safety and freedom of expression of translators must be warranted at all times. Basim Mardan, a translator from Mosul, escaped from death and became the first icon guest writer in Norway in 2006. In 2019, Penn participated in a Protect Linguists event at the United Nations headquarters in New York in order to raise awareness for the need for greater legal protections for local civilian translators and interpreters in war and post-war zones. Let's go to Mount Kenya. Ngugi Wationgo was one of the experts who drafted the Universal Declaration of Linguistic Rights. Penn campaigned for Ngugi when he was in prison in 1978 for a play he had written in Kikuyu, and his book, Decolonizing the Mind, where he invites all African writers to write in their own languages, had a tremendous impact in our organization. In 1996, the Universal Declaration got the immediate support of President Mandela and Archbishop Desmond Tutu thanks to the president of Penn South Africa, Anthony Fleischer. At every meeting in UNESCO in Paris, the South African ambassador was supporting the Universal Declaration of Linguistic Rights. At the turn of the century, Penn centers in Africa developed creative writing projects in schools for the promotion of African literatures, with tens of thousands of participants in countries like Sierra Leone, Guinea, Mali, Ghana, Malawi, South Africa, Zambia, and recently, Penn Togo. We see here one of the school groups of the civil society program of Penn Zambia with writer Marita Banda in charge of coordinating creative writing programs in Tumbuka language. And we see here Marita in a Penn workshop in Malawi in 2018 sharing the knowledge gathered from the youth groups. Now we move to Johannesburg. Penn also participated in the research and promotion of best publishing practices for African national literatures, understanding the translation of African languages as culture's oxygen, which was the title of the 2016 Penn report. The title of the report was given by Ngugi Wationgo in his prefaces written in Kikuyu language. The report was researched by Penn centers and compiled by the chair of the committee, Simona Skravich. It was presented and debated in a session of the committee in Johannesburg in 2016 with the participation of all African Penn centers and it made a call to support the intertranslation inter among African literatures. And now let's travel to South India. 
a meeting of the committee in Bangalore in 2017 was the first step for the founding of PEN South India, gathering writers in Tamil, Malayalam, Telugu, Konkani, Kannada and Marathi. The new PEN Centre welcomed the 2018 PEN Congress in Pune, where two very innovative events took place. First, a speed dating session between international authors and Indian translators as part of the celebration of an issue of the journal Padmaganda. Second, the most impressive celebration of linguistic diversity. In the form of a traditional pilgrimage called Vari, 5,000 students from Pune colleges demonstrated with banners with the names of the 6,000 languages of the world and the 780 languages of India. In 1996, the World Council of Indigenous Peoples was deeply involved in drafting the Universal Declaration of Linguistic Rights. Representing the Council, Edic Samontiel, a jurist from the Wayo culture in Venezuela, was among the keynote speakers at the conference. Let's go to Guatemala. Rigoberta Menchu became the spokesperson for the Universal Declaration of Linguistic Rights. We see her here with Kendall Nezan, the director of the Kurdish Institute in Paris. In one of her appearances, Menchu said, in language lies the main weapon of resistance. At the 2003 PEN Congress in Mexico City, the committee organized a meeting of writers of indigenous languages of Canada and Mexico. But it was not until recent years that indigenous writers joined PEN. Let's go to Buenos Aires. There, in 2018, in the context of a Congress of Latin American PEN Centers, the Committee of Writers in Indigenous Languages Carlos Martinez Sarasola from PEN Argentina was founded. We see here Ina Jaramillo, the leader of the group, with a condor feather, the symbol of PEN. Nina traveled to Chiapas in 2019 because the committee wanted to celebrate the International Year of Indigenous Languages. We proclaim in San Cristobal de las Casas the vision of PEN, writing the future in indigenous languages. One of the panels included indigenous writers from Mayans, from Guatemala and Chiapas, uh, Quichuas from Argentina and Inu from Quebec. The banners of the meeting were very beautiful, reproducing a traditional Mayan pattern in the form of a pen. The sky of Chiapas was filled with those stars. In 2020, PEN Chiapas Pluricultural was welcomed by the Assembly of Delegates of PEN, uniting writers of a dozen Mayan and Thoke languages. And a PEN Quechua is on the way. And now to Manila, in the Philippines, the PEN program named for Love of the World, Workshops on Teaching in Philippine Literature, has been supported for more than a decade by SIDA. Philippine PEN is a decentralized center with presence in Mindanao, the Visayas, both in Cebu and Samar, in different areas of Luzon and all over the archipelago of the Philippines. These workshops of Philippine literature build a strong relationship between writers and teachers and are changing the school curricula as Santiago Villafania from Penn Philippines has been reporting at Congresses. The context is essential because of American colonial and neocolonial influences. Anglo-American literary texts are the sole canon for world literature and Philippine literature written in English as the main text in the literature classrooms. Philippine Penn has worked to promote a reversal. The literature that is taught through the program is the literature of each school's cultural community. Teachers report feeling better equipped to teach literature as a result of the training they have received from the Penn Center. The 85th Penn International Congress in Manila had the title Speaking in Tongues, Literary Freedom and Indigenous Languages, as 2019 was the International Year of Indigenous Languages. The keynote speaker at the Congress was the Special Rapporteur on Minority Issues of the United Nations, Fernand de Varenne. In this panel, he appears in the center. The panel is chaired by Simona Scrabbage, and there are participants from Argentina, Chiapas, Quebec, and two Filipino languages, Varay and Kirinay. Let's finish in Stockholm. Here, in 1978, at the Stockholm Congress, Penn International's Committee for Translation and Linguistic Rights was founded with the mission of promoting both translation from literature of lesser currency and the equal rights of all language communities. A meeting of our committee will take place again in Sweden next year at the Uppsala Congress. According to our logo, we will continue celebrating all literatures without exception. As Rigoberta Mincio said, in language lies the main weapon of resistance. PEN members have been using this weapon daily, tirelessly, and against all odds for a century.